Thank you everyone for your wonderful association. We'll start with the kirtan and <clears throat> we'll take it from there. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Gopi Jana Vallabha Jai Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Varadhari Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Vraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jayaradha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, <coughs> Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Jaya Guru Deva Jaya Guru Deva Guru Deva Jaya Guru Deva Nitai Gora Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Nitai Gora Hari Bol Nitai Gora Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Nitai Gora Hari Bol Shri Nam Sankirtan ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnav Vrind ki jai, Shila Prabhupad ki jai, Nathai Gaur Pranandi Hari Hari Bol. So we'll start with our prayers. <coughs> Om Agyana Timirandasya, Nana Anjana Shalakhaya, Chakshurun Mil Tamyena, Tasme Shri Gurave Namah, Mukam Karuthi Vachalam, Pangum lang hayati girim, yet krupatamaham bandi, shri gurum dinatarinum, Parman and the madabam, shri chaitanya ishwaram. Namom Vishnupadaya, Krishna Prishthai, Putale, Shri Mate, Jay Pataka Swamin, iti namine, Namo Acharya Padai, Nitai Kripa Pradaine, Gaur Katha, Thamdaya, Nagar Gram Tarine, Namo Om Vishnupadaya, Krishna Prishthai, Putale, Shri Mati Bhakti Vedant Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishe Shunnevadi Paschat Desh Tarine Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shrivas Adi Gauravakta Vindaki Jay Vanchakalpatrupya Shakipas and Eva Chapatitanam Pavani Pro Vaishnavi Punam
अनंत कोटि वैष्णव रंग में की जय प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मी फॉर आई हैव अ सोर थ्रोट सो आई मीन आई हैव बीन डूइंग दिस कंटिन्यूसली सो आई एम वेरी सॉरी फॉर दैट सो टुडे टॉपिक इज अबाउट लॉज ऑफ कर्मा और हाउ दिस कर्मा वर्क्स सो फर्स्टली दिस वर्ड कर्मा इज अ वेरी कॉमनली यूज टर्म वी हैव ऑल हर्ड अबाउट इट एंड द बेसिक थिंग अबाउट कर्मा दैट वी नो इज दैट इफ यू डू समथिंग गुड इफ यू डू अ गुड एक्टिविटी यू गेट गुड रिजल्ट एंड इफ यू डू समथिंग बैड यू गेट बैड रिजल्ट फॉर इट सो दैट इज द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कर्मा सो इफ यू हैव गुड कर्मा यू विल गेट गुड रिजल्ट एंड हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट सो इन दिस लाइफ इफ यू आर बॉर्न इन अ गुड फैमिली इफ यू हैव गुड लुक्स एंड इफ यू हैव इफ यू हैव गुड पीपल अराउंड यू गुड जॉब देन वी नो दैट ओके दीज आर ऑल रिजल्ट ऑफ आवर पायस एक्टिविटीज वॉट एवर गुड एक्टिविटीज वी हैव डन इन आवर पास्ट बर्थ बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी आर रिसीविंग द रिजल्ट नाउ एंड देन देर आर मेनी पर्सनस हु आर नॉट बॉर्न इन अ वेरी वेल टू डू फैमिली हु हैव लॉट ऑफ डिफिकल्टीज एंड इवन इन आवर ओन डे टू डे लाइफ बिकम वी हैव टू कम अक्रॉस मेनी चैलेंजेस uh sometimes we have some we get some illnesses because of which we have to suffer a lot or sometimes we have to suffer because of our spouse or because of our parents because of their bad behavior so all of these things are the results of all the bad karma or or the bad activities that we have done in our past birth or in this birth so now um i will try to take you a little deeper to understand how this karma works and we all want to have a very blissful life a very happy life is there anybody who wants to suffer or who is very happy with all the sufferings um okay let me ask the other way because i <clears throat> so that i know that you are all uh, able to understand what i'm saying so anybody who wants to uh, or who wants uh, to have a very uh, joyful life a very peaceful life no suffering at all you can raise your hand <laughs> okay so all right so i can see all of your hands coming up yes of course we all want to have a life where we, are, we where we are not suffering <laughs> yeah so even kids actually so even kids when they have to go to school sometimes uh, you come across other kids who are very uh, who may be bullying you or who may be rude to you so all these all these things even for kids it's it's, it's not just that the adults have to go through sufferings even kids have to go through so many uh, illnesses so many diseases and they have to suffer so much so all these are actually nothing but they are all results of the activities that we do and uh, another thing is that we are constantly doing activity every decision that we take is an activity is a step toward an activity so taking a decision whether to eat something or not is also taking a step toward an action so even that has a karma so the karma works in various layers so now here uh let me see if i can share my screen okay i'm not the host here so i have not can try now
okay this is not allowing me anyway so it's not allowing me to share somehow um okay so we'll not waste time in that then i will just try to explain Okay, so now um, the first thing is why do we suffer or why is it that some of our activities have bad, bad results and some of our activities have good results. The reason is our own ignorance. Avidya. Ignorance in, in Sanskrit is avidya. Now ignorance of what? What kind of ignorance? So the ignorance about our real identity we do not know who i i do not know who i am that ignorance now you may think that okay what are you even talking about obviously i know who i am so if i ask you uh, some of you can raise your hand or one of you can raise your hand and tell me if i ask you who are you Please raise your hand and tell me, who are you? Do you know who you are? Uh, materially, I can say I am. I know who am I. <laughs> I have an identity, identity by my name, where do I live, uh, like, as which yes. I belong. To, yeah. But I am asking you, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the question. Who are you? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I can say like Rabani's father or something like. That. Okay. Anybody else? Who, yes. This is this. This is correct. This is what we all know that we all identify ourselves with our body. That okay. My name is Shama Karuna Mai Devidasi. Okay. I'm somebody's daughter. I'm somebody's sister. I'm somebody's, um, you know, uh, aunt. So this is the identity we all know about. Or I or I am a singer, I am an author, you know. I, I like to do research. This is all what we like to relate ourselves with. But do we really know who we are? These are the activities that we are doing. This is not who we are. Yes, um, yes, you can unmute yourself, uh, Lal, Lal Mohan Kaku. Yes, we are. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am the soul and servant of Krishna. Krishna is our supreme father, and that is our real identity. Okay, that's very nice. <laughs> that is the ultimate like understanding that we want to go to. But do we really understand that I am the soul? Do we really understand where is the soul? We are, we have so many layers. Uh, intellectually, yes, we understand when we study, when we study the scriptures, when we study the Bhagavad Gita, and when we read Srila Prabhupada books, we understand that our real identity is we are, I am the soul. I am the soul. It is not that I am this body and within my body there is a life force. No. That life force is me. And I have entered into this body to do various actions, to do various activities. And that can be anything. It can be I saw Kite Prabhu was driving a car. So in a simple way, this is a very good example that Srila Prabhupada gives. That just like we say, I am not this body, I am the soul. It is just like the car and the driver. The car is the body and the driver is sitting inside the car and driving, driving the car. The driver decides where the car should go. What the car, you know, how to, how to 
manu maneuver the steering so that the directions you know whatever the driver decides according to that he will uh, steer the wheel and take the car there so that is exactly what we are doing v means the soul the soul uh, whatever desires are coming whatever thoughts are coming those things you know we are using this body to do that and because we are not realizing that we are not this body so we are constantly just trying to fulfill the desires of this body because of which we get into a completely ignorant uh, ball it's a it's a we, we are getting into an ignorant casing and we forget that our real identity is that we are the soul so what happens is that when we when we forget this we start doing things that our body likes to do we feel hungry we want to eat something we don't consider what is right and what is wrong if when we are hungry and our tongue says oh i want to eat this you know i have a desire to eat this immediately we just we start thinking that okay if i want to eat this what should i do should i cook it at home or should i go to a restaurant and have it so the so what we are doing first the thought comes and then we start planning for it so there is a propensity that you know we want to enjoy because the body the mind has desired something so that propensity and then we start planning with our mind so i need all of you to be with me because this is a journey we are we are trying to enter a journey and we are trying to enter layers and then we will see how to come out of it so is everyone with me i need to see that yes all of you are we are all on the same page okay thank you so now the thing is that uh, the propensity that okay i am hungry and this is what i feel like eating so the desire has come and then in my mind i start planning that okay should i cook it at home or should i uh, go outside and have it or should i just order it home so all these planning is happening and then my intellect selects one of the options okay let's order it let's you know order it and get it home so one option selected so what happens next is i perform my action so the action is i call up the restaurant and then i order it so i have so the action is done then what happens the food comes and i start eating it okay so the action is done now what happens is once the action is done depending on whether this action was right or wrong the result will come we are not aware of it we are not aware of it but the action is done and the result is awaited either the result will be immediate or you will see the result at a later point or maybe in a next birth in some other birth but the result is awaited okay so every action in this way that you do has a um, re has a result awaited so now the word the terms used uh, in in padma puran there is there is a, a verse that mentions about this and uh, the thought that comes or the propensity that is there that is called kutam kutam okay so when you have a propensity oh the, i want to enjoy i want to um, uh, i want to you know um, make more money you know i want more money or i want a big house i want a bigger car or i want to have uh, uh, more friends so to attract more friends you know i need to look good or i need to wear nice clothes or you know have uh, do this or do that so all these are propensities so that is called kutam then you have a desire uh, you have a desire to do it that okay now i need to do this need to do what need to you know have uh, to have good looks okay i need to wear good clothes so i need good clothes these are desires are coming up i need good um, uh, branded uh, creams or lotions for my face and for my body i need a good haircut so all these are desires so this is called the seed 
the seed you are planting which will grow into a tree to give you the fruits so that seed is called bijam okay so the seed of that desire that you are putting that you are sowing in your life is called beej bijam the next thing is that you actually start performing the action you go to the uh, mall to purchase these things and then um, you know you go out uh, to maybe pubs or uh, uh, some bars or you go out in a restaurant or whatever it is these are these are just various examples that i'm giving uh, so so when you when you actually perform the action that is called uh, papam it is the pap that you are doing pap means sin sinful activity that itself is the pap that you have already done now somebody may say that why is it a sin to eat outside or why is it a sin to you know um, do all these things so that is ignorance because we are ignorant that we are not this body we are the soul we have to take care of the needs of the soul which we are not doing we have forgotten our real identity that we are actually um part and parcel of the super, of the super soul of the supreme lord and actually we are supposed to do something else but here we are identifying ourselves with this body the skin and the flesh and all these things and that is why all the desires that are coming because of this body we are all relating to that somebody hurts us some some somebody says something to us we immediately feel pain that oh you know that person said this to me he behaved badly with me or she she was rude with me because we are identifying ourselves with this body but we are not the body so the moment you realize that okay that person spoke rudely to this body but not to me i am much much inside the body i am just i am just <clears throat> the activator of the body the moment you realize this all your actions will be controlled and focused on the soul and not on the body but because we are not aware of this because of this ignorance we are all reacting to situations instead of responding to situations so so when we perform an action that is the pap that is the sin the sinful activity that we have already committed and when we commit the sin when you already commit a sin what happens is there are two um branches that come out so one is that there is a uh, an immediate cause of it and there is a delayed result so the immediate result is called prarabdha immediate result that you get that you eat something from the restaurant and the very next day you have uh, an uh, a, you know bad motion problem you have a uh, you have a disturbed bowel uh, and then or you have loose motions you have diarrhea all these things all these things are basically an immediate result so that is whatever you are getting immediately but there is something called a prarabdha that you have committed a sin but the results are getting stored for a later point and that later point can come at any point of time either in this life or in the later lives so this bijam papam kutam prarabdha aprarabdha yeah till here are there any questions um if any of you have any questions till here then please raise your hand and you can ask me and if there are no question just pertaining to this part till what i have spoken if there are any questions pertaining to this much please raise your hand and we can address those questions now or i will move ahead um so i don't see any hands coming up so i'm uh, 
I'm hoping that it's either either all you all of you have understood everything well or or it's all uh, not understood at all. I hope it's the first option. Okay, thank you, thank you. I can see that. All right, all of you can put a thumbs up if you have understood till now. If it's clear uh, till now. Okay. Okay. And. Um, uh, Kite, uh, am I am I going very fast? Fast or is it okay? Is the speed okay? And are you able to understand? Uh, I guess you're going okay. Is it is it uh, uh, understandable what I'm saying? Like, have you been able to understand what I've been uh, speaking about and what I've been trying to explain? Uh as much as I can with the situation I'm in, so um, I'll be home in like the next 10 minutes, so. Okay. All right. So uh, should we move ahead? Should we go ahead with the next part of it? All right. So, so, the, so the thing is now, so we understood that, okay, this is how karma works, that you do something and then you get the results. Now, coming to the point that, uh, you know, we say that we, um, we want to come out of the suffering. So, what is the way to come out of the suffering? Is that when you get purified. So, what does puri getting purified means? Getting purified means that all the layers that has got formed because of the many births that we have taken, all the layerings that have come, all the conditionings that have come, all the desires that we have been doing from so many past births, uh, and we are holding on to them so strongly that it becomes very difficult for us to change our own habits. So, so getting purified means that when we completely um, come out of the bodily concept and we are able to do all our prescribed duties without being attached to the results and offering them to Krishna. Because Krishna is the Supreme Lord. And when we are offering it to Krishna, uh, there are nine ways that have been mentioned that how do you, um, how do you get purified? And that is only when you uh, keep Krishna in the center and when you perform Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, uh, pa Vishnu, Vishnu Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Vandanam, Archanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma Nivedanam. Atma Nivedanam. These are the nine limbs that have been mentioned that these are the ways through which you can purify yourself. So the first thing, Shravanam. That is what you all are doing, hearing. Hearing about what? Not hearing about any random stuff. But hearing and trying to understand about the Supreme Lord. Because our real identity is that we are part and parcel of that Supreme Lord. So we are the eternal servant of that Supreme Lord. But since we are now in the bodily concept, we have forgotten all, all these things. And for us, it is just me who is at the center of all my activities. What is my, what do I like? What do I want? What is my desire? You know, I don't like that. That is not my desire. You know, I want this. I am happy with the way my life is going. All these things are basically my own perceptions. I do not, I am ignorant because I don't know what is, what is it that Krishna wants from me. Because I am not connected to Krishna. The next is Kirtanam, chanting, chanting of the holy names of Krishna. So, this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This 16 syllable mantra is not some ordinary mantra. Okay, if I keep saying Coca-Cola, 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 
suddenly coca cola coke the coke bottle will not come in my hand okay and neither will it do any good to me or anybody else or if i keep if i keep saying the name of uh, of one of my friends suppose okay uh, suppose i keep saying mohan 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 of course mohan is krishna's name but i'm just saying for example that if i if i call out the name of a friend suddenly my friend will not appear here has it ever happened with anybody that you are you just keep chanting the name of somebody that you are you know you wish to see and that person suddenly appears there has it ever happened with anybody no i wish it happened no because we all wish that you know when we are missing someone and we we chant their names and they come and you know we are able to see them but krishna the name and the form are non different when you say hare krishna they are non different from krishna krishna is personally present on your tongue when you are saying krishna so this that this is not an ordinary mantra it is a transcendental mantra it transcends all these material conceptions that we have it is beyond all these material skies it is a very very transcendental and the topmost uh, uh the topmost divine um aspect so when you chant this maha mantra the purification starts so purification starts me- means what when you start chanting this maha mantra you are associating with the supreme lord with the su- divine supreme couple personally with them and when the supreme lord is personally present with you then there can be no inauspiciousness everything becomes auspicious because the supreme lord is personally present with you and that's when you gradually you know uh, um step by step the purification begins the purification of all our layers greed lust hankering lamentation jealousy sometimes we are jealous of people you know many times why sometimes we are all aware of this when when something good happens to someone else we do feel you know something inside us that oh, oh okay that's nice they yeah, are good very nice <laughs> but it's not that we are very we feel very happy that oh something good has happened to them but something bad has happened to me that is jealousy that is comparison comparing yourself with someone else and then lust the lust that you know um i want this i want to do this i need this this is lust because this is hankering want 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 need 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 okay then um greed so greed is i already have something but i want more of it i am not satisfied i am already earning well and it is i am doing well with you know uh, my family is well taken care of but now i want to earn more you know i want to have more money why so that i can spend more to get more luxurious things in my life that is greed so all these things are anarthas yeah these are all anarthas these are all the layerings the more the layerings the more the sufferings will be so we have to break through these layerings so that we can reduce our sufferings so that we can get purified and then once we are purified we are completely out of all sufferings because then we are not we are not relating with the body we know our real identity now coming to this point that when we come into krishna consciousness what happens all these bijam papam kutam prarabdha aprarabdha that we spoke about what happens to that so when somebody is not in krishna consciousness they have to go through this cycle this cycle keeps repeating itself so you have a propensity now suppose a thief a thief has a propensity that okay uh, uh to steal something okay a bank robber will have a propensity that okay i want to rob the bank that is a propensity now then then the seed is that okay they start planning for it 
okay how to rob the bank or how to steal something for some from someone so they start planning for it that is the seed the bijam then the next part is after planning it out this they execute the plan and they actually steal something from someone or they actually go and rob the bank so that is the pap the sinful activity has been done and then what happens prarabdha and aprarabdha either they will get caught by the police or the police is not able to catch them so they feel that okay you know the police is not able to catch me so i'm free no the laws of nature nature is watching laws of nature is very stringent and and they are making note of each and everything that you are doing so the police may not be able to catch you but that doesn't mean that you are out of danger rather you are into more danger because the laws of nature has all has already noted it down and is going to make sure that you get the results of it so that is a prarabdha gone for storage so this a prarabdha is like a vast ocean it's like a vast ocean and um, this prarabdha that we say sometimes in our life uh, you may have come across people that you know there are some people who get cancer suffering from cancer or um, suffering from some chronic ailments uh, lung issues or uh, migraines or something of these sort of things chronic issues so that is because of prarabdha you know maybe some people may be suffering from a uh, high blood pressure or um, they are always you know because of high blood pressure they are always having some other issues or high di- high diabetes diabetic highly diabetic so all these things the this is part of prarabdha or some skin issues some people may get some skin issues very very severe skin issues some people may have rashes all over their body and face so all these physical things or you know these physical kind of sufferings that is actually prarabdha that they are the result of their past karma that they have brought forward in this life okay so um so this uh aprarabdha and prarabdha you know all this entire thing is like a vast ocean now i need you to visualize as i as i speak i need you to start visualizing so that you are able to relate what i'm saying because i am unable to share anything here otherwise i would have wanted to uh do it over a white board and draw and show it to you so since i'm not able to do that i would request all of you to please be with me stay with me and try to visualize as i speak so there is a vast ocean which is your aprarabdha that means all the things all the results that you have not yet suffered but they are they are hanging on the top of your head <laughs> any moment that will drop and you have to suffer that so that is your aprarabdha and prarabdha is that before we take birth before we enter into this body the body that you are in at this moment each one of you the body that i am in this okay this is my body in this current life so when i when i was entering into this body before that what happens i go to that vast ocean with a bucket depending how vast is my ocean now some people may have done many good deeds many pious deeds so there so this aprarabdha the suffering may be very little not much so maybe they don't have a vast ocean maybe it's like a pond for them okay it's like a small lake or a pond for them so they will go with a small bucket and suppose my karma my my sinful activities are endless so i have a vast ocean so i go with a huge bucket and i fill fill some my bucket with that water basically not water it is the karma that i have to suffer in this life and then i and then i take birth so after taking birth whatever the bucket is holding all that i have to suffer that is how prarabdha works and then after after doing all these things in my this life you know i have suffered the aprarabdha that i brought forward but at the same time i have been doing other activities also so i have been adding drops in that ocean again because i have been doing many activities so as i am 
taking out a bucket at the same time i'm also filling it with my own activities is this is this making sense are you able to understand what i'm saying okay so so while i'm on one side i have taken out something on the other side i am filling it up also because i am constantly doing some or the other activity the activities never stop the desires never stop the propensities never stop but when someone comes into krishna consciousness this movement that our shrila prabhupada has given us he has given us all the means and ways so that we can break open this this entanglement of suf- this suffering birth death this um old age disease prarabdha aprarabdha everything so when someone comes into krishna consciousness what happens is krishna directly starts taking care of such a devotee such a person and then what happens is the first thing that krishna does is he removes the um bijam the seed okay now what was the seed can someone raise their hand and tell me what what is the bijam what is the seed seed means what anyone the propensity uh propensity is uh, very nice but the propensity is um kutan but thank you thank you kite that the uh, i'm so happy that you know you are uh, you are with us so i'm so glad but kutan is propensity what is bijam yes i saw that uh, nandini has given the answer so that is the answer bijam is the desire okay when you start planning plan in action is sinful activity but planning itself is the seed the bijam and the propensity okay the propensity to have such desires the propensity to enjoy to have such kinds of desires that is kutam so um so the first thing that krishna does is that he removes the bijam from us then the second thing krishna does is he removes the kutam from us and then the third thing he does is he takes away that vast ocean of aprarabdha that we were supposed to suffer for millions of more births not just in the human body it could it can be any body there are 84 lakh species on this in this material world and we and to to suffer a particular kind of thing or to enjoy a particular ca- sort of desire krishna will give us birth or the laws of nature they will give us birth in any one of those kinds of body many people like to swim a lot lot they they love swimming so what happens as per laws of nature they will get birth in a body of a fish so that they don't have to unnecessarily unnaturally you know in a human body go in the water and swim they are born as fishes so that they can swim and be in water some people like to do sky diving they enjoy doing uh, bungee jumping that's so they enjoy uh, you know being in the air so they will get body of a bird there are many people who are very very addicted to having multiple partners to enjoy sex life they will get birth as either dogs or they will get birth as worms or they will get birth as pigeons because these are the species who are free to enjoy sex life they don't need to be committed to one partner so the desires that we are creating based on that we will get a life uh, we will get a body so what krishna does is that first he takes out the bijam 
then he takes out the kuta and then he takes away the entire vast ocean of a prarabdha just can you imagine just because you have you have taken the shelter of krishna he is taking away all of that that we were supposed to suffer because of our own foolish rubbish trash like desires he takes away that and then the fourth thing that he removes is prarabdha that is which we are already going through the sufferings that we are already going through that is the last thing so just very recently i was um, one of one of the devotees um had this question and i was explaining this to the devotee and this devotee's response was wow you know i really uh, loved this part where krishna is taking away the entire prarabdha that is so wonderful but why is he taking the why is it that he is uh, taking away prarabdha in the third place why not the first place so just imagine that you know krishna is the supreme lord he is the most intelligent of the intelligent okay the the intelligence of the most intelligent person comes from krishna okay there is no comparison of einstein and krishna because krishna's tiny portion of drop of intelligence is what einstein had and we look up to him so just imagine the intelligence of krishna we can't even imagine actually it is beyond our imagination our senses our understanding is all limited but krishna is unlimited he has no limits so so krishna why is he doing this why does he take the bijam first not the prarabdha a prarabdha or the kutam why does he take the kutam next and not the others the reason does anybody want to attempt uh, to answer this anybody wants to try answering this that why why this step why is it that it is uh, bijam kutam pap um papa then uh, Pra, a prarabdha and then prarabdha why is it like that i i, I think because uh, even if if he takes a prarabdha first the desire will we will still have the desire and uh, you know uh, uh, the desire of doing the sinful activity then again the prarabdha a prarabdha will keep on accumulating this is my thing excellent thank you thank you param prabhu excellent that is the answer because krishna knows that if he is taking away the aprarabdha but still we have the propensity we have already we are sowing the seeds so and we are doing the sinful activity so what is happening on one side he is taking aprarabdha on other side we are filling the ocean again we are filling that filling it up again so what he does is first thing is he takes the bijam the sinful desires so the desire that i want to enjoy i want to do this he takes away that desire so as you know um as you continue practicing krishna consciousness obviously it will not happen on day 1 on day 2 it may happen also it all depends on your sincerity it all depends on my personal sincerity it is not it's not a group activity it is individual activity if i am sincere it can happen in one day also but if i'm taking it casually that okay let me do this also let me do a little bit of that also and let's try something else as well then it will take its time but it will it will work because krishna is not some ordinary person he is the supreme person so his words will never go what he has promised will never go wrong and that's why he takes the bijam the sinful desire out of us then he takes the propensities out of us you know the propensity that um uh, propensities to desire to desire something sinful so that is taken out then when these two things are taken out then obviously pap the sinful activity itself will not happen because we don't have a desire we don't have propensities we are getting purified so that's why no no question of sinful activity then what happens then he takes the a prarabdha the awaited stock of our karma and the next is he takes our prarabdha that we are already going through and we are already suffering so that is taken by him 
and once that is taken by him then what remains is that we are in pure bliss we will not be impacted by any any material sufferings we will not get affected by any material sufferings and then we are comp we will be ever blissful and we will be able to chant the glories of krishna continuously because then we are fully connected with krishna so we may be in different situations you know we we may be at different levels somebody is just beginning to come into krishna consciousness somebody is trying to understand about it some people may have come few years back and they are seeing the results and they know how uh, their life is getting transformed even even now among all the uh, devotees here i personally know many of you uh, and i know the transformations that have happened in their lives so so different people are at different stages some are just stepping into this some are trying to understand what exactly is this movement or what exactly is this karma or hare krishna or who is krishna all of these things some are okay you know we have started this it's working for us but um, yeah okay it's going on some are very sincere about it they have no other desires they are in bliss and they just want to serve krishna they want to hear more about krishna they want to speak about krishna to others because they are in complete bliss they have realized that you know the material world is just superficial it's there today it will not be tomorrow even we have to leave our body we are not going to be in this body forever even we have to leave our body because this body is not permanent so before we leave our body and we do not know when we are going to leave this body does anybody know when are we going to leave this body no right so what you do now how sincerely you take up to it depends on you and that is why shila prabhupad says do not waste time every moment matters we may have complaints that you know my situation is like this my situation is like that my family is not supportive my family is not favorable or um, i am still you know i am very young or i am very aged you know how can you expect me to do the, all these things but it's just our mind it's all in the mind if you understand the the urgency here if you understand why this is important then you will all these reasons will not matter to you you will ensure that you do what is needed and you will and you will uh, you will sincerely strive to do it so with this i will stop here and if you have any questions or any doubts any feedback um then we can take those now okay if there are no uh, questions or doubts i have one question yes yeah, sure sure please so i just want to make sure i didn't miss that part when you were talking about um like the order in which krishna krishna takes things away can you just like repeat that one more time yes so the first thing that krishna takes is the bijam the seed seed means that how we plan to execute our desires so suppose my desire is that um for example i want to go to a restaurant or i want to have uh, something i am thinking of something that okay this is this is what i want to eat so this is something i want to eat is the propensity then i start mm -hmm. 
okay uh, now if i want to eat this should i cook it or should i go out and have it that planning is called the seed then the third thing is i decide okay this is what i want to do i want to go out and have it in a restaurant so that is actually doing the sinful activity which is a uh, papam the third step and then when we do it when we when we have already done the sinful activity then it comes under either prarabdha or aprarabdha so what krishna does is the first thing he takes is the seed the the plans that we make how the how we plan it out he takes okay, that so he, yeah so so the desire he, so it's not the desire and not the propensity yes that's the first thing then he takes the propensities so the first thing is when when the desires are taken away we are, because desires are something that as soon as we desire we start we execute it as soon as it is executed sin the karma is added so when the desire is taken away propensities are there but you but your desires reduce so sinful activities are reducing then the next thing is he takes the propensities so no propensities no desires no execution of sinful activities does it make sense uh, i think so yeah if you have any more questions in your mind you can ask you can go ahead and ask in in our scriptures doubts are compared to demons so whenever we have a doubt we should always freely ask those questions we should never keep doubts within our mind and asking questions is a um, sign of an intelligent person Wait, so he, he takes away the, he's taking away the planning first, right? He's taking away what first? So he takes away the, the planning thing first. Yes. So I will tell you why. I this... think you, I think you, did you say why is that, that and it's not like versus like just taking away the like desire first? I think, did you talk so about, I, about that? I, how this works i'll tell you how this works so when somebody comes into krishna consciousness and when somebody st starts chanting this hare krishna maha mantra and there are four um four basic rules of this so the first is so we call it the a b c d rule so a is association association of the devotees those who have realized this those who understand this and those who are sincerely fixed upon this so association of such persons b is books that will give you the knowledge deeper understanding of all these aspects so the books will help you to uh, answer various doubts when you when you read these books they will clear out many of your doubts c is chanting this hare krishna maha mantra which is not an ordinary mantra it's a it's a transcendental sound vibration which itself purifies all these things and d is diet diet means what we eat so when somebody is in krishna consciousness in bhagavad gita krishna says that um let me see if i can oh okay i cannot share the um, just give me one moment Just give me one moment. Let me try if I can share my screen. So,
Okay, can you see this? Uh, can right. you see my screen? Okay, so uh, here, Yajna Shishta Shina Shanto Muchyante Sarva Kil Vishai Bhunjate Te Tvagham Papa Ye Pachanti Atma Karanat. So we'll read the translation. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. So here in the purport, purport Srila Prabhupada is saying that the devotees of the Supreme Lord or the persons who are in Krishna consciousness are called Shanta, Shantas. And they are always in love with the Lord as it is described in the Brahma Samhita. So I'll skip that line. Third line, the Shantas being always in a compact of love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead or Krishna cannot accept anything without first offering it to him. So the devotees, they always, whatever they are cooking, they offer it to Krishna. Without offering to Krishna, if somebody is preparing something and eating that, it is clearly mentioned, This is these are words of the Supreme Lord. They verily eat only sin. Therefore, such devotees always perform here. There were such devotees always perform yagyas in different modes of devotional service, such as Shravanam. Shravanam means hearing about Krishna. Kirtanam. That is chanting the names, the holy names of Krishna or singing the uh, kirtans of Krishna. So anyways, the point is diet here. I was mentioning about diet. Why diet? Diet because the devotees, they never eat anything that is not offered to Krishna. And he, Krishna is also mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. He has also clearly mentioned that what are the things that can be offered to him and what are the things that Krishna never accepts. So diet is a very, very important aspect here. And these A, B, C, D, these things, when one is, one is following these things, what happens is that automatically the purification starts and that purification itself is the direct proof that Krishna is taking away the Bijam, the Kutam, a Prarabdha, Prarabdha, all of that. The person who is experiencing it knows that these are the things happening in that person's life. Because the person himself or herself starts experience, experiencing all of these things. It is not something that we, are, we, we will not be aware of. When you start practicing it, you will see things happening in your life. You will see it um, unfolding. So does that answer your uh, doubt or? Uh, Kite, have we lost you or are you there? I can't see you wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, yes. So does this um, make it slightly more clear? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yes. So, of course, this is a very um, vast topic. And we are just doing uh, a one, one and a half hour se session every Saturday. But, and this is your first session, as I understand. So, and for the first session, I think this is, of course, a very uh, deeper uh, topic to understand. But what I'm trying to say here is, as you do these sessions, you will be able to understand all of the, these things more clearly. And as you start following the process, 
you will be able to see those things happening in your life you will be able to experience them yourself it is not something that we just do and we we don't experience anything it is an experiential thing it is something to experience also so as you um, as you continue to stay connected with anant vilas prabhu and as you stay connected with these sessions you will be able to understand them more deeply so are there any more doubts or questions or any feedback okay i do not see any hands raised so should we stop here yes hare krishna uh, i just wanted to offer my gratitude to shama karuna mai uh, this was a very uh, nice session very uh, very deep session uh, and it was explained in a way that is understandable uh, quite a bit like in much simpler terms okay and uh, i really appreciate uh, kite prabhu um, ruchi mata ji um, for joining okay param prabhu for joining okay we are very very grateful basically when we understand whole idea like okay, if you look at bhagavad gita i just wanted to add one thing like okay, in bhagavad gita in the very beginning in the introduction shila prabhupad says that okay that uh, krishna is very concerned that okay to see anyone suffering and that is why krishna wants to give his message so that like okay, all his children which is all of us okay all all the living entities they can come out of this and they can be happy blissful and permanently happy that is that is the nature like okay i know your lalu kaku is there param prabhu is there your parents like okay my parents are here vatsal <laughs> prabhu is here like okay so those who are parents their thing is like okay, they want, they never want to see their children suffer so that is why krishna is giving this message showing us where this and this is coming through shila prabhupad who is a pure devotee of krishna and shama karuna mai very wonderfully put this in different aspects uh, lalu kaku if you have a question uh, or comments you can share actually yeah if it is specific to this session <laughs> yeah particularly for this session i have one question uh, this, am i audible are you listening yes yeah. yes okay now the what uh, i have uh, read it and i have learned uh, in bhagavad gita or bhagavatam ye our karma our karma fall we might have done some pious activity some uh, impious activity something good something bad and uh, if we have done something bad uska result we have to suffer that result it is not like that that we have done 10 good activities and five bad activities so five bad activities will be nullified by 10 it is not like that so whatever we are talking that so many sinful activity we have done and uh, when we come to the uh, krishna consciousness and from that time our bad activity will be reducing we will not be going for that but does it mean that whatever the bad activities we done it earlier that will be nullified or we have to we have to suffer for our we have to suffer for uh, the the uh, for our bad activities in no way it can be nullified by the good activities that is my question bad activities and good activities are two parallel lines good activities can never um 
is not an atonement for bad activities. So if you have done good activities, you have to take birth to enjoy them. If you do bad activities, you have to take birth to suffer them. Actually, there is no such thing as enjoying. It is suffering only. After doing the good activities, taking birth in this material world itself it's, is a suffering. Because this material world is meant for suffering. Because we are doing sinful activities. So, they will not counter each other. But what happens is, when, when one person comes in Krishna consciousness, the purification starts. So, you are already having some a prarabdha and prarabdha. Krishna is very, very merciful. The Supreme Lord is the most merciful. We are doing sinful activities. We don't even care about the Supreme Lord. We don't even look at Him. But He is our Supreme Father. He is always concerned about us. And that is why in different ways He wants us to go back to Him. So that we don't have to come back to this material world again to suffer. And that's why what Krishna does is, whatever is our suffering, it makes it very compact. The suffering becomes very compressed. We may feel that, oh, this suffering is a lot for me. Then just imagine what our actual suffering would have been. It is said that if we get a small cut on our finger, ideally it should have been that the finger itself should have got cut out. We may have committed something for which the entire finger should have got cut out. But Krishna is so merciful that he takes care to it that the finger doesn't get detached, get chopped off. So you get a small cut. So whatever sufferings a devotee has to go through is basically a very compressed, compact uh, Thing of the entire suffering to suffer. Because prarabdha is, prarabdha is going on. Purification is a process. It is not that I come into Krishna and get completely purified. It is a process. You do the, you practice this process and you get purified. It will take some time. But when doing it sincerely, Okay, so it is a process that uh, when somebody holds on to the process and when somebody sincerely tries to practice this process, that person is sure to get fully purified. And all the sufferings, all the sinful activities that he has done previously the aprarabdha that he has not yet started suffering will not come to him. But whatever is in the destiny that this person is supposed to suffer, that will become compact. Because Krishna wants us to go back to him as soon as possible. Krishna also doesn't want us to suffer. So this is how it works. But yes, when somebody is committing a sinful activity and then thinks that, oh, I have done a pap, so I should do some pious activity. No, this cannot counteract. For the sinful activity, the person has to suffer. For the pious activity also, the person has to suffer. Which is, we, we say that it is, he has to enjoy, but there is, in this material world, enjoyment is just an, is a slight absence of suffering for some time. But we are constantly suffering. It is obviously like in this material world, the journey, you know, it's uh, the, our, our, if you see our day-to-day -day activities, you know, wake up in the morning, go to work, do this, do that, take care of family. If you don't earn money, if you don't have money, you, uh, what, what are you going to eat? So th these little things, you know, you have to strive for everything. People don't mind it because we have got so conditioned, we have got so used to it. But when somebody is with Krishna, they don't have to think about all these things. We are not meant to worry about all these things. 
this is not what we are meant for we are krishna's eternal part and parcel we are eternal servants of krishna but because of our own desires that we wanted we were so envious of krishna that is why we have landed in this material world and now we are suffering so does that uh, clarify the question kaku uh i will unmute kaku you have to unmute because ha uh, thank you mata ji i have got you okay thank you kaku so if there are no more questions and uh, then are there any more questions i will just check once any more questions or any any thoughts that you would like to share hari krishna mata ji hari krishna i don't know who is speaking okay yes yeah like session was nice like it's a nice session mata ji and uh, like you explained it very nicely <laughs> like at the beginning i was i was not getting but later on you have explained so deeply so i am able to understand it nicely <laughs> and thank you thank you for explaining my sri mata ji all the glories to shri prabhupad yes <clears throat> thank you so very much for your for all of your kind association and for giving me this opportunity to speak and purify myself so anand vilas prabhu should i yes. um thank you everyone Thank you very much once again, Shama Karna Mohan. I think Lalu Kapoor has raised his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Hello. Yes, yes, Kapoor. Yes, so uh, yes, um, this is not a question. This is a comment. And I have read also earlier law or the law of karma. And today also Mata Ji has explained us in detail, in very much in detail, what I did not. uh i am uh, i have read through law of karma i have listened from uh, many person about the law of karma but such a in deep and detail i i did not listen earlier so thank you very much mata ji thank you very very much i am very happy jai shri prabhu so uh, vanchha kalpatru bhyascha कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमो अनंतकोटे वैष्णव वृंद की जय सवेद गौरांग कुटी भक्ति वृंद की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय निताय गोर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल